Google. My name is Mohanad Hatam. I'm one of the senior Max Factor procedures at King's College Hospital. And we're part of Carolina Maxilla Facial Unit, where we do different reconstruction of different parts of the human body. We do facial parts, we do also heart tissues, meaning bone parts like skull plates. 3D printing revolutionized the practice of medicine. Like in the past 10 years, we would not have the facility to have like a 3D model of the skull of the patient before going to the surgeon. In the past, the patient used to have to go to the surgery to do the surgery. But nowadays, saying for this example, for this model, this is a bone tumor on the right hand side of the skull of the patient. And in the past, we could not have this 3D model. But nowadays, it's something a must to have before going to the theater. As you can see, it printed in different colors. So the red color differentiate the tumor from the remaining of the skull. And not only printing different colors, you can just remove it and you see the outcome of the surgery after it's performed. And then the surgeon will have in mind how much material he needs to use to implant and to restore that defect, which is also designed before going to theater. So this is an example of an implant will be printed out of titanium. And titanium is a very biocompatible material that can be printed and set inside the body and restore the defect. So you can tell nowadays everything is done just before the patient going to theater. At the time, theater is safe by doing everything before going to theaters. It's very beneficial for the patient, uh, achieve uh, much accurate re reproduction and reconstruction of the defect, and it sometimes saves time. And time nowadays is money, especially if you're talking about operating theaters. In the past, this kind of operation will take 10 to 12 hours to be done. Nowadays, most of the operation is done outside, the theater and the theater they just need to remove the tumor and then reconstruct immediately. So that saves time at least one third. Like saying if this operation will take 10, 12 hours, now this will take six to seven hours. Depends on the complexity. And also make communication with the patient easy. So if you have like a 3D model of the skull and tell the patient saying that's the tumor, that's what's gonna do be done at the time of surgery. The tumor will be removed and then will be reconstructed at the same time. That will make it easy for the patient to understand what they are gonna have at the, at the theater time. Like saying if they say they're gonna operate in a patient having a bone tumor in the right hands of the skull, so we usually require to have a CT scan, which is a computer topography of that skull. Once we have the CT scan, we process it using a specialized software, materialized software, and then using the Stratis system, we manage to once we have a virtual 3D of that skull of that patient, we manage to print it. And once we print it, we'll be able to work on that in terms of doing the mock surgery, like say, re remove the tumor at, and the unit, rather than sending the patient to the theater before sending the patient to the theater, and reconstruct at the same time. In terms of reconstruction material, we have different options. Like most commonly used one is titanium. And nowadays we can print titanium, because in the past it used to be milled, like out of block of titanium, and you can imagine if you, you, you mill a block, it will be heavy in weight. And nowadays, where so many technologies are available, you can print that in a honeycomb structure, like very porous from the inside, not only reduces the weight, but encourages the, the bone to grow inside that one. Uh, we don't have uh, 3D printing of metals in-house, but usually outsource it outside the hospital to be printed. It's really expensive and requires high-tech specification we don't have in half. To, to print our 3D models and do the basic work until, if we want to, to print a metal, we outsource it. But any 3D model in communication with patients, we have it in house. We use it as part of our, our profession. Nowadays, it's like changed. Everything now is computer aided design, computer aided manufacture. And we host the first cohort and the second cohort is what's called scientific training program, meaning they will training students to become a reconstruct reconstructive scientist over three years' time. And part of their curriculum, they need to be able to function and operate a free three dimensional printing facilities, which tells you that 3D being heavily integrated in any curriculum, teaching curriculum. In the past 10 10 years, it was not like a must. It was like an elective. Nowadays, it's a must in any curriculum. And you can imagine in 10 years' time what is that leads into. These shows are, gives you like the state-of-art technology available in one place. 
So instead of going Googling and going on the internet to find different, you can have like a word and communicate with people. And people are really helpful. Try to give you options on what can be done. You just need to present your case, what you need to do, and then they'll give you the options. And you can't like showered with so many ideas that I need just to sit down and write them down and have what, what in my mind to, to develop the service for the next five, 10 years.